hour number two of the fastest two hours and talk radio. It's the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Coming at you live from New Zealand. Live from the future. From the fabulous fluoridated capital of Auckland, New Zealand, in the island's slave chain, South Pacific Nation. My very special Kiwi collaborator for today, um, who's had to leave our slave nation, um, like like most of the other talented people in this country, because you can't make a decent living in this country, even if you wanted to, <laughs> his name is Simon Kaiwai. Welcome to the show. Simon, you, you, you cut out there. I can't hear you. Oh, yeah, good day. No, you... No, sorry, we can't. Um, we can't. We can't hear you. Sorry, there, Simon. Um, we'll we'll have to reconnect you um, as soon as we can. Uh, Dan, uh, Adam, can you? Can you? Um, no, no, it's 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 terrible. Um, quite frankly, okay. your connection's cutting cutting out yep. like uh, every couple of seconds. Um, but anyway, keep <laughs> keep on trying to talk if you want. <laughs> Not sure how much we'll hear. But uh, explain a little bit about yourself, Simon. Yeah. In uh... no, no, sorry, sorry. Um, we, we, no, no, it's it's not working. Sorry, Simon. We'll we'll have to um, hang up on you and uh, reconnect you on Skype if we can. Um, well, anyway, um, I wanted to uh, continue on uh, with the news of the day. Um, there's a remarkably large amount of uh, articles that have just been posted on uh, Guerrilla Media, and um, I wanted to um, give praise to uh, Gordon Duff from um, from Veterans Today. And uh, Simon, if you can if you can still hear me, um, just pop your, uh, if you've got a landline number there, perhaps uh, please just pop it into the Skype chat and we'll see if we can reconnect you that way. Uh, article headline is, Years of Deceit, US Openly Admits Bin Laden Been Dead a long time, and the uh, the facial photograph of of Osama bin Laden's corpse uh, supposedly he he in fact died on uh, December thirteenth of uh, two thousand one, according to Benazir Bhutto, the uh, premier of Pakistan, and uh, Bush lied about bin Laden's death uh, to push the war and ruin the U.S. Constitution. And uh, bin Laden never mentioned uh, in the McChrystal report. Or uh, the Obama speech, the hunt for Bin Laden is basically a national shame. And uh, it it doesn't seem um, like a terribly uh, brilliant idea as far as I'm concerned. uh, When we look at international events to assume that the government's telling the truth, it's it's about as um, it's about it's about as dumb as you can get because the manipulation is so full spectrum and it doesn't it doesn't make um an awful lot of sense to me um uh, simon can you actually hang up your um your skype call there and uh, we, we'll um see if we can get you up uh, after the break or or as soon as possible thank you um and uh, i'll just read out this article here conservative commentator former marine colonel bob uh, Pappas has been saying for years that bin laden died at tora bora and that senator kerry's claim that bin laden escaped with bush help was a lie now we know that Pappas was correct the embarrassment of having Secretary of State Clinton talk about bin Laden in Pakistan was horrific. Um, He's been dead since December 13th, 2001, and now, finally, everyone, Obama, McChrystal, Cheney, everyone who isn't nuts is finally saying what they have known for years. However, since we lost a couple of a hundred of our top special operations forces hunting for bin Laden after we knew he was dead... Is someone going to answer for this with some jail time since we spent $200 million on special ops looking for someone we knew was dead who was going to jail for that? Who, who was going to jail for that, you know? And we are back live, I believe. Um, <laughs> now, uh, we would like to reconnect uh, Simon Kaiwai if we can. Uh, Adam, are you there? Seem to have had um, some description technical difficulty uh, with right. AFR, and I'd like to apologise uh, to the affiliates and um, our very special listeners indeed for this um, for this grievous technical glitch. Um, but conveniently, one of the problems that we had uh, was uh, Simon Kaiwai, my guest, my Kiwi collaborator for today, cutting out on his Skype, 
and uh, whilst the entire uh, AFR feed was cut out, I managed to he managed to get it fixed. So Simon, welcome back to the program. G'day, Vinny. Thanks, mate. Good to be here. <laughs> okay, just give us a wee bit of a background about who you are and why you uh, GTFO New Zealand. Well, yeah, in your intro, you said it was uh, hard for too hard for a lot of Kiwis to make a living at home, and and that's certainly true. But for me, it was more because uh, there are too many people making a killing over there. <laughs> I didn't want to become a statistic. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was it was more out of necessity. I, I was finding uh, that I was ducking a lot of blows from the state after standing up against privatisation. And uh, and so it's a move to be constructive and, you know, taking my family to a safer place and, you know, keep on the good fight. Okay, yeah, and so, I, when, so let's, let's go into specifics. You were fighting privatisation. How, how long ago was this? What type of privatisation was it? Well, you know, a lot of people have seen the uh, movie Zeitgeist and are familiar with the, uh, the agenda, which is to... Uh, first, you have to put a value on things, monetize them, and then you corporatize them. You put them into companies, and, uh, and which is which are private companies. Um, and the first thing that they they do is is to take the essentials of the nation. So your water, your electricity, your roads, if you can, your telecommunications, railways, all that kind of stuff. And you see it the same in Argentina. You know, it was there. It was Cuba. Um, any place that they've been, which is, and they are, which is most places, um, they follow the same pattern. And so knowing this zeitgeist agenda and seeing that New Zealand was continuing on that, on that same path, I, uh, I thought that I'd um, try and stop it by um, evidencing that what they were doing was, the method that they were doing it was unlawful. So um, case in point, when the electricity infrastructure of New Zealand was, was built, it was built on the public sweat and equity. It was all of our taxes and our effort that actually made that thing and all of the, the um, telephone lines and that kind of stuff. And what they did, the government in New Zealand did, or set the parliament, was just passed an act to be able to take it from all of our names, basically we're all shareholders of it, and they put it into two ministers' names. Now this is the same, again, that they do all over the world. And then once it's owned by the state, per se, they then say, well, we're going to privatise it. So it's a, an incremental step towards privatisation. And they ask us, you know, do you want us to privatise it or not? And the point is to, to, to um, give our opinion on that transaction from the state to uh, the private corporation. We, all we can do, really do is submit um, and give our opinion where if we backed it up a step and said, look, we're actually shareholders, we own that, that entity and, and we're going to vote on it as uh, shareholders or not vote on it and retain the ownership, um, then we can avoid these privatisations. So that's what I did. I, I, I basically put them in a spot and said, look, um, uh, prove to me that the public sold this electricity company, uh, these electricity companies, and you can do that by just um, signing a bill which would say that someone has confidence that it's a true bill and could be sued in the case of fraud. And what I found out was that um, they'll go to great lengths not to, not to be on the hook for fraud because they know that the way that they're doing it is unlawful and fraudulent. So that sort of began a very long journey for me because I didn't realise quite how... Uh, I knew it was bad, but I didn't realise how... Uh, integrated and how pervasive this system is and it goes you know across the police the justice system all of these state-owned enterprises the uh, privatized companies immigrants that have come in and sworn an oath to this crown corporation uh, uh, you know the the whole mainstream psyche and what i found was you know after standing up it wasn't just fighting um, the Crown's prosecution, but you literally get persecuted in community at the same time. Oh, yeah, I mean, we're talking about a, a, a uniform society, essentially, that, um, well, 
they all act in a pre-programmed fashion. Somebody stands up, starts doing something a little bit different, um, and in my occasion, somebody stands up and stops being a, a retarded uh, non-thinking automaton who obeys whatever evil orders that are given to them, uh, well, hey, you don't even have to be oppressed by the state in many cases because, yeah. you know, the general society will do it for them. And, you know, it, it's like when we talk about the sell-off of public assets and the, and the effort that has gone into actually creating those assets, all the people, we make the effort... And then the politicians come along and F it up. You know, that's what I'm talking about. This is the, this is the uh, problem reaction solution we've got here. You know, we create the resources, we create the wealth. They come along and allow us to elect them so that they can steal it off us without us batting an eyelash in a lot of cases. <laughs> and that's exactly the case. You, you chose the right word because, you know, I studied the law for two years to actually get into that position of going, well, the of working out that it was unlawful the way that they were doing it. And if it's unlawful, it means that it's fiction. It didn't happen, i.e. we still own those things. So I just thought, well, they've fraudulently conveyed it. They've, they've, they've you know, fraudulently sold it. Oh, that's unlucky on the buyer because it's going to come back to us. And, and I suppose and, I was naive. We'll be right. Oh, yeah, here you go. Well, you know... Naivete is one of the things that will wind up uh, making you learn the most, I think. <laughs> <laughs> because you get hurt the most. We'll be right back at the Vinnie Eastwood. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show on AmericanFreedomRadio.com and incidentally, the Eastwoodshow.com. Proudly brought to you in collaboration with GorillaMedia.co.nz. New Zealand's alternative media, where Simon Kaiwai is now a uh, contributor. And if you go down and you can um, see one of his blog entries, um, you can actually copy and paste the RSS feed to your own website of the specific bloggers that we have uh, working with us at Guerrilla Media. So that's a good, nice, happy note. Uh, now... Uh, well, where, 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 where were we, Simon? We were talking about um, how the uh, government's basically... Yeah, naivete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, yeah. see, this is the thing. This is the thing about patriots and people who care about their country. They think that, they, they think that the country cares about them. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of that, that's for sure. Well, our Department of Labour and, uh, and our Department of Immigration are openly stating that New Zealand is a nation of immigrants. How do you feel about that? I don't know. I think it's um, I think it's quite apparent because any time I go to a fast food restaurant, go to a go to a grocery store, or uh, or get on um, public transport, or go to any government agency, I see nothing but foreigners. That's right. Yes. Well, it's actually it's the same world over. And I do want to get to that, but uh, finish off that that thought. What what I was. Uh, what I was naive about was that um, I thought that the, uh, these companies had just fraudulently bought it. But what's actually happened is they've, they've, these supposed uh, public servants have taken these, these uh, public entities and put them in their own names. In fact, like the electricity uh, companies in New Zealand, they used to be held under the Electricity Board New Zealand. And it's actually the same people, it's a lot of the same people that have owned these private companies, they just put it in their name. Now, the net effect of that is that when these uh, politically connected people, the, the supposed elite, uh, call the police that are also privatised, the police are now working without court orders and going and doing their bidding. And then the judges get their, get their brief and whatever else, and you find yourself in a whole world of... Uh, a whole world of hate, actually, where you're just trying to bring a bit of love into the love and light into the world, you know. It's like, hey, I love you. I love my country. I want to make sure everything's going on just fine. Stab him in the face. Stab him in the face now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, but 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 this journey. I mean, it's put me in prison for a couple of weeks after that, and. Uh, um, in fact, it's pretty terrible what they did. They came and they did a zeitgeist-style disconnection of electricity. Uh, no notice, no court warrant, uh, no court order. And at the time, my account was actually prepaid, which no one does, right? But I had done that. They came and disconnected the electricity, and a couple of cops jumped on me and... 